Welcome back for part two of my studio build in my garage. In the last video, I was talking about some big gaps that I've got on the roof. I've already boarded a lot of it up, but I need to fill in these bits here so nothing can get down into the insulation. So a bit of chopping and filling in gaps and I was ready to go. Now, these are the fiddly little side quests that you need to do in order to make sure that everything else is ready before you go on to your main project. And as I've said before, this is a single skin garage wall, so I need to be careful with how far I'm drilling here. I still need to be able to store things in this part of the garage, but it's not going to be supporting a lot of weight. It's just to fill in the tiny little gaps on the edge. I've used a little bit of damp coarse membrane just behind the batten here to ensure that the wood doesn't start rotting when the wall gets a bit damp. And here you can see the finished progress. Now I'm off to an undisclosed DIY location to get some more things to do with the garage. I've always found in here that leaves are always able to blow underneath and I ended up blocking it up with little bits of wood and other things. But you can actually buy a storm guard for most DIY places to fit onto the bottom of the door and then stick down a little rubber strip underneath to stop anything blowing in. I'm still unsure about whether I need to board up some more of the door here just to insulate the garage a little bit more. Now in a different undisclosed DIY store, I went and got a couple of things to enable me to maximize the storage inside the house. Now we've got a lot of things that are still stored in the garage and we're going to have to store them up here now in the loft. This is quite a simple task to do. All you need to do is get some loft legs and some screws and a screwdriver, figure out how far you're going to need between your loft legs and don't fall through the ceiling while you're doing it. As always with these kind of jobs, this is a little bit of a fiddly side quest, but it was great to get some extra storage in the house. We can store all the Christmas decorations and the other things that only come out once a year, like the gym equipment that I use to keep fit. Anyway, back to business and in the garage. Another bit of the prep work that you need to do in order to start putting things up on the wall is to make sure that all the walls are a little bit watertight, to a degree that is. Here I'm using some PVA based slurry watery paint to mix all over the walls and seal it up. This is going to seal up the gaps and make sure that none of the moisture is going to seep through from the other garages. I don't want any mold or damp in this garage build and I really appreciated having a little mini heater out there with me in the cold and it got me thinking maybe I'm going to need something like this in my office as well. If you've got any suggestions please hit it up in the comments so I know. So hopefully I've been able to run through a lot of the little side quests I've had to do in order to be ready Ready to get going with the main build. I've mixed up a slurry to seal up the wall, I've made sure there's enough storage and I've filled in all the little gaps and bits and bobs. Working in an outbuilding like this so you do have to get used to some of the other creatures that you're going to be sharing a space with. As long as you're not too squeamish this is a fairly simple project to get going with and I'd encourage anyone to have a go. In my next video I'm going to be starting work on the floor and getting some of the electrics in place to enable me to have some light and some heat and also the main thing, the internet. If you've spotted anything that you think I'm doing wrong, then please let me know because I'd love to be able to repair it before it's too late. Thanks for stopping by. Catch you again.